What's cracking, everybody? You're back with Mr. Burger. At the time of this recording, it is the last day of the season. So I've been trying to do a little bit of trophy pushing. Now, my current highest is just over 4,900 trophies. I'm not going to make it that high this season, but we're going to take a look at some recent matches that I did earlier today with some replays, and then we'll go ahead and jump on into some live matches as I trophy push. <laughs> Alright guys, in these replays I am going to be using the recently covered 3.3 elixir cost or average elixir cost hog wizard cycle deck that I concocted myself. Now it's a combination kind of of the classic hog XE NATO and the classic hog 2.6 deck except that I ran uh, tornado instead of cannon and I subbed in a few other things based on card levels so like I'm running wizard instead of executioner. Uh, Knight instead of Ice Golem, so on and so forth. So we can see here, I really like this play here. What I'm doing is I'm hanging tight. Watch how I use the Knight against his Wizard to distract it, and then I pull in the Valkyrie into my King Tower. So the Wizard does not connect to the Tower, doesn't do any extra damage. Knight completely takes it out for a positive 3 for 5 trade, and then the Valkyrie is pulled into the King Tower, thus activating it for the rest of the battle there. Now this guy is running a funky Mortar deck. It looks like it was inspired by an Expo deck, but he kind of swapped out the Expo for a Mortar because he's running Tesla as well. You'll see that a lot, so I need to learn how to play around that and be careful. And this guy does make some weird plays, you know, this isn't super high in trophies, so they may not be making the best moves, like playing the bomber at the bridge there just seemed kind of funny and unnecessary. Wouldn't necessarily agree with it, but hey, it worked out for him. So we'll see what I do next. I like to cycle Knight in the back when I got nothing else to do. I don't generally put stuff at the bridge with this deck unless I'm running like the hog. Uh, at the bridge. Of course, I'll put him right up there, you know, maybe put a knight in front of him or a uh, ice spirit behind him or something like that. Uh, anyway, we got the hog rider going in here, and I probably got my hand on the lightning because I see that wizard. I want to take that wizard out, get a little bit of extra damage onto the giant skeleton as well, and I use it just in time here. Wizard doesn't get any damage on my wizard. Of course, the giant skeleton's bomb does manage to blow up and destroy my wizard, so I give him the screaming bandit kind of as a joke. Now, here, I don't have much in hand to counter that. Mortar, honestly, so I just kind of desperately use the Ice Spirit and the Bats to get a little bit of DPS out, cycle them through. It does get the Mortar down to about half health, and then of course I'm not playing very well at this spot. I'm kind of desperately putting stuff down there just to try to counter that Mortar. But that Zap gets some good value because it hits the Tesla, kills all the Goblins because they're only level 12, and also gets some damage on the Mortar. So it worked out okay. Now here we're in Double Elixir, so I'm probably going to be cycling through to my Hog as much as possible, uh, you know, trying to get it onto the Tower when the time is right. I use the Bats and Ice Spirit to support it and just kind of cycle a little bit. Bats are pretty solid behind a Hog Rider because they'll get a good chunk of damage off. You know, they provide a lot of extra DPS. And here's the classic, you know, Siege counter, putting the Knight or Ice Golem or Valkyrie in the opposite lane. I pull his Valkyrie into the center there, and since my King Tower is activated, it destroys it before it gets any real damage off into my tower. Meanwhile, my Knight is getting a little bit of damage off into his left tower, but I'm thinking, okay, I'm not really focusing on the left. I just need to play defense and get that right tower down in the last few seconds here. I know that it's really low, so I can potentially just get like one more Hog Swing plus a Lightning, or maybe two Lightnings on it. So I do the one Lightning there just to get a little bit of damage, take out the Mortar, deal a little bit of DPS to that giant Skeleton. I use the Hog here, it destroys his Mortar and then goes on to the Tesla, which is pretty good for me. I need to defend against that Giant Skeleton, and at this point I know that all I really need to do is cycle back to that Lightning. So I do something unconventional, just Tornado everything away from the Tower there, just to pull it away, and also buy me a little bit of time, and cycle through a cheap card. And then I get back to the Lightning, use the Lightning, finish up that Tower. Alright guys, this ma next match here, it looks like it is a Ebarb kind of deck, Ebarb e Hog deck, running both... Musketeer and Ice Wizard. So it gives me the potential for lightning value. And you'll see I actually slip up here once or twice. I try to lightning both the e -wiz, or excuse me, the Ice Wiz and the Musketeer right here, but they're just far enough apart that I only clip the Musketeer. Negative trade for me, which isn't the greatest, but I do get some chip damage onto the tower. I do take out the Musketeer completely, so that's four elixir of his gone, although it costed me six. And it also just takes that Musketeer out of the equation for dealing any extra damage or staying alive as a support unit. Same thing there that I did in the last match, a little bit late with the Knight, but it worked out okay because since the uh, Ice Wizard was locked onto the tower, it wasn't slowing the Knight down at all. It allowed the Knight to just wreak havoc onto that Ice Wizard, no problem at all. Uh, in the meantime, we got the Bats coming down here on defense. Anytime that I see that they use like a solo ground unit, I can generally use Bats to counter them because they don't attack air and Bats can do some serious DPS before they can react. This guy will often zap my Bats right out of the sky. And that's not that big of a deal, since this isn't really a zap bait deck. I don't have a lot of zap cards in there. I mean, he's naturally going to do that. But since it's a, only a 2 elixir cost card, it's not like a goblin gang, then it's always going to be an equal trade for us whenever he zaps my bats. 
So not a big deal again if he's zapping the bats out of the sky. It also takes the zap out of the equation for him using it on you know maybe an offensive push or whatever else he might need to use it. You know again not too many zappable cards in this deck, but it's one of those spells that can be used to like do a little bit of extra damage to the tower or get the tower or, or a siege unit to like retarget onto something else, so on and so forth. There's the bats again, and actually tornado everything into the center there to buy me a little bit of time. I clipped both with the ice spirit just barely. I was worried the ice spirit wasn't going to freeze that hog as well, but it does. It manages to get a little bit of damage there, so that's pretty good. We got the knight going off on offense here after he's defended, and I'll generally send the hog in once I've got like a knight or a wizard or something alive. And here I see huge lightning value against that ice whiz destroying that cannon, completely takes them both out, so that's an equal trade just on the cannon and the Ice Wiz, that's 6 for 6, not counting the damage it did to the tower as well, and also not counting the room that it cleared up for my Hog Rider, enabled for it to, you know, be able to go and get some extra swings onto the tower. If I hadn't done that, that Ice Wizard would have slowed it down enough, and the cannon would have, you know, canceled it out pretty much, so that the Hog Rider ended up being worth nothing, and just being 4 Elixir wasted. Here I'm a little bit late with the Ice Spirit, but I do send it in with the Bats to distract the E-Barbs, and then the knight there, again, to be a little bit of a mini tank. Knight, still one of my favorite cards in the game. He was nerfed a lot, and he's finally been rebuffed a bit, so I think that he's kind of back in a pretty solid place. Uh, if I had my Valkyrie leveled, I might be running her, but I still like to run knight. It's a really great card all around. Here you can see that I'm just defending on the right, and I'm providing a little bit of pressure to push on the left, just so that he doesn't push too hard on the right, but I know that all I need to do is defend against that Valkyrie, and that pretty much ends the match for me. So, another victory there. Let's go ahead and jump on into one or two last replays. Alright guys, this next one is actually a loss. And if you've been watching my channel for some time, you know that I like to include watches, excuse me, include losses for us to watch from time to time. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. Well, first of all, in this particular replay and in a lot of losses that you may do, you actually make some really solid plays. And I did so in this replay here, as you'll see. Like, I made some good moves that I wanted to point out to you guys. Uh, and on top of that, it can be really hard to watch yourself lose and go back and, and get more frustrated and tilted and see where you messed up and relive it, right? But honestly, guys, like that's a really good strategy. If you talk to almost any pro player, they will tell you. They go back and they watch themselves. When you're not playing a game like Clash Royale, if you're playing like Apex Legends or something like that, then you may actually need to record yourself and go back and watch where you messed up. Or if you're playing WoW or something like that, go record yourself go back and watch where you messed up because you can't really watch replays like you can in a game like you know Clash Royale or say like StarCraft or Warcraft or something like that, right? Uh, a lot of games have replays but not all of them have. So when you're watching yourself play you can, yeah, first of all get frustrated and retilted, but secondly you can see where did I mess up? Where did I go wrong? Where could I have done better, right? Uh, what caused me to lose? What caused that little half second slip up? You know, what placement did I do wrong? that made it so that the knight went into one lane and not the other, right? Just really small things like that. It, it, they can seriously make a difference to see where you slipped up. So in this match, it's looking real good for me most of the time. And I think it was just one little mistake or two at the end. Like, for example, a good play there, I pull in the whiz, excuse me, the princess with the tornado. I also pull the e-barbs away from the tower and splash it all with the wizard there. So it's... Uh, you know, it all gets destroyed, no problem. And I get a really good elixir trade there. And then again here, look at that Ice Spirit freezing the, all the goblins in the Goblin Gang and the Zap destroying them all. Zap normally wouldn't destroy regular goblins. It instantly kills Spear Goblins, but it doesn't destroy regular goblins. So it uh, worked out really well there. You know, another solid play. Now here I'm a little bit low on elixir, so I kind of desperately tornado that thing to the tower, or away from the tower, and I get his mini P.E.K.K.A. in onto my tower. And that was kind of my demise. I didn't defend enough against that mini P.E.K.K.A. and that comes back to haunt me later. It ends up being, uh, you know, getting a good chunk of damage off that, you know, causes me the loss in the long run. Now, on his part, that was a good log because it pushes everything back and then also kind of predicted my Ice Spirit there and took it out. I got the Wizard here on defense again. I see his Hog Rider coming down. I'm getting ready to tornado it. Not the best placement of the tornado, but I use the Ice Spirit to freeze it, tornado the pull it away. Wizard lives, lives long enough to get some damage onto it and finish it off. Use the Knight on defense there to just try, try to defend against his Princess. Uh, doesn't work out too great because he's got the mini P.E.K.K.A. again. And I'm just going to zap all the stuff on the right to take it out. And then I got to do something against the Princess to kill it. He's got two of them down now. Uh, let's see, the E-Barbs actually kill my wizard there, unfortunately. And here's where he gets a good chunk of damage off. Again with the tornado pulling the princess away from the bridge there into my territory so that my towers can finish it off. It's really good. But I just slipped up and made a mistake there at the end and didn't defend hard enough. 
should have put more elixir into that defense and it allowed him to take out my tower and you get the victory there all right guys enough jibber jabbering let's go ahead and jump on into a real match here as usual when i'm playing live matches i'm going to be uh watching from my alt account and playing on my main account here on my phone and because I was talking so much, I didn't answer that goblin game perfectly. Although it actually worked out pretty well, because it didn't get any damage onto my tower. And Knight lived to go onto offense. Gets one swing off onto those pesky little archers there. I'm going to go ahead and bats in the back here. And then we will probably hog up at the bridge to distract those archers. Get my bats to be able to live and go in on offense here. Let's zap all of that. Uh, one swing off from the hog rider. There we go. That was good. All right, he's got a bomber coming down. Bomber not something we see too much. I'm going to go ahead and wizard here, and I'm going to knight on the bomber, and I'm going to get ready to pull everything together with a tornado once that uh, giant gets closer to my tower. Yep, here we go. I don't want those bats to get any extra DPS onto my tower either, so we're going to pull everything away there. Let's go ahead, and we're actually going to save our elixir here. I'm not going to support that wizard. I'm just going to let him go in and die uh, because I don't have too much else that I can send in with him. I didn't have too much elixir in hand at the time. Didn't have enough to send in the hog rider. I would have just sent in the ice spirit and it wouldn't have been the greatest. Let's go ahead and use the ice spirit plus a couple of bats here on defense. Again, not the greatest. I should have put the ice spirit further to the left so that it actually jumped onto those goblins. I think they got like one swing on my tower, but not that big of a deal. I do need to save the zap for his skeleton army, which he's probably going to have right here. Yep, there it is. And let's zap everything there. I think I'll get one swing with the hog here. Yeah, there we go. One swing with the hog rider. I'm expecting a giant on offense here again. So we're going to go ahead and wizard here. Yep, there is the giant. And we're going to knight those archers. And we're going to tornado everything together. And let the wizard splash it all. And that's pretty much the beauty of this deck, or, or that combination, really. The wizard plus tornado, or executioner plus tornado. Just pull everything together with the tornado. Let the wizard go to town. Let's try to get this hog rider in here. It's not going to get in before the wizard, I don't think. But it should get a little bit of good support. All right, he's probably going to log. Ooh, nice. Wizard took out the bomber there. Zapped all the skeletons except for one, so that was really good. Hog Rider gets like three swings off onto the tower. That was huge for me. That could be the win right there, but let's not get cocky yet. All right, we're going to knight up here, and we're going to tornado as usual, as we've been doing, to shut down his offense. Oh, the value is so awesome right there. Knight is still alive. Wizard is still alive. Just chipping away at that giant slowly but surely. Sending the hog a little bit early. I wanted him behind the knight. But honestly, it's not that big of a deal because the knight doesn't have much health left. And I think my opponent gave up at this point. Uh, I don't blame him. Uh, that was a mistake, Zap. I meant to put the knight down there. So, um, guys, at this point, they've given up. So we're just going to go ahead and put everything on offense there. No need to waste time. Let's jump on into another battle. See if I can get another win or two before we wrap up this video. Now, Gold Rush is going on right now. But I've got it all maxed out on this account already. So I'm not really getting anything extra here. Let's go ahead and give this guy good luck going up against another level 13, so that's good, so it's not going to be a, you know, kind of uneven match in my favor, which is never too fun, especially when I lose, because then I'm like, oh great, I overleveled them, and I still lost. That's a wonderful feeling, right? Alright, what is it with all these e-barbs, dude? Like, I feel like I've been seeing e-barbs all over the place lately. Let's tornado everything together, let my wizard splash it all ideally. The one e-barb lives, not that big of a deal if one of them leaves and gets a few swings onto my tower. Because we're going to go in for an offensive counter push here with the knight, the wizard, and the ice spirit. I don't quite have enough for my hog rider yet, so I'm going to see what my opponent uses. He uses, whoa, he uses hog in a really weird spot. It's okay, it's only going to get one swing off on my tower, and then the bats are going to go ahead and defend easily against the skeleton army. And now they're going to live to support that hog rider that I have sending in. Alright, one, two swings off onto the tower with the hog rider. He zaps all of those guys. Um, I'm going to actually zap this prince so that it chance cancels the charge and then I'm going to knight up here so that it shuts it down and I don't have much so I'm just going to ice spirit here and bats just to you know buy me a little bit of time. Alright, uh, didn't wasn't too worried about that goblin game because I don't have much damage off on my left tower yet anyway. We're actually, I know it's late, but we're going to king tower activate here with the tornado. Better late than never. My tower, my tower on the right still has 1790 health left He's running hog, he'll be sending more hogs in, so I'll be ready to tornado them into the center, completely shut them down for a positive elixir trade there. Alright, so I'm actually not going to aggressively send my hog in right here. I'm going to hang tight, I'm going to see what my opponent does. He's almost at max elixir here, so he's leaking right now, as you guys can see. Kind of cheap that I can watch that on the spectator side, but it is what it is. They, I mean, they have that in the game, it's a feature, they should take it out. All right, he rockets and I lightning. That's pretty funny. I'm going to do the cheering knight for that one because that was pretty entertaining. All right, let's see. I'm thinking probably just going to send in the hog rider at this point and just support it best I can. 
Uh, I got the zap ready for his skeleton army or whatever he may do. Now he actually zapped my knight and my hog rider and my ice spirit and didn't zap my um what was it there? The bats there, which was kind of weird. I'm not sure why he did that. Maybe it was a slip up. Oh, I was worried that Prince was going to connect to my tower. That could have been terrible. All right, I've actually cycled back to another hog rider now. Those e-barbs are going to chase him all the way down the lane. He gets one swing off onto the tower. Not that big of a deal. Let's go ahead and we're going to knight here. We're going to tornado all this together. I wanted a wizard with that tornado. That was a uh, kind of unintentional. And honestly, those bats are pretty terrible too, so we're just going to let that tower drop. Not a big deal. We're going to go ahead and we've got to send in the hog rider here and take out that tower on the right. Or else it's going to be GG. Let's see, can I get the lightning in time? Yes, I can! There we go, still alive, still in the match. Super close there. Uh, my king tower is super low, i got to watch out for that. Oh man, that's scary. Alright, uh, let's see. Probably just going to wizard on the left to counter his wizard. I'm expecting like a hog or something to be sent in to support that. I'm just going to let my ice spirit die here. Um, oh no, actually I could use it a little bit late, so not the best there. Uh, let's see, probably zap all- ooh, that meant to be a zap, not a tornado, that was a mistake. But, I can still make the best of it and defend here, and maybe take out that tower. That tower is within lightning range, guys. I can lightning it now, and get this win here, come on, there we go! Alright, good game, give him the, uh, Chinese New Year piggy, and, I mean, that's two in a row. Let's, let's see if we can get one more win before we call it a video. End of the season. It's always easier to trophy push because, uh, you know, most people have dropped a bit or uh, rather pushed up a bit. So uh, you're going to be going up against lower level people or less skilled people. At the beginning of the season, everybody is, you know, uh, how do I explain it? Like all the higher ranked and higher trophy people are, you know, pushed down automatically. So if you're naturally a little bit lower in trophies, you're going to be going up. Ooh, look at this lightning value here. You're going to be going up against, you know, people who are... Uh, going to be a little bit more difficult. All right, let's see if I can cancel that with the... Um, oh, this could be really bad on my part, but I'm going to pull the bandit in to the king tower, and let's see, I'm going to counter the princess with the bats. This is really sloppy, guys. This is really bad. I'm going to zap that. Probably not very good, but, you know, the king tower plus the princess tower will hopefully take those barbarians out relatively quickly. Um, okay. I gotta get back in the game. What happened there, I think, was I invested way too much on offense with, like, that offensive lightning and everything and the hog rider, and he really punished there by uh, taking advantage of the elixir advantage that he had so that, you know, he was pushing in pretty hard in both lanes, and he knew that I didn't have much elixir to defend. So right now I'm actually ahead of him in elixir. We just gotta successfully defend against this prince, and in order to do so, we're going to ice spirit and wizard to counter it. Ice spirit should leap on him and freeze him. Wizard should be able to DPS him before he charges in. And man, that prince hurts! Holy crap! Two non-charge swings from the prince. And my wizard was just gone, just melted. Right, we're gonna zap this and assume that he doesn't support it. Those guys are all gonna die to my princess tower. And he does support it with a bandit. So we're gonna go ahead and knight here. And this is gonna be really funky, but it should buy us a little bit of time, do a little bit of extra DPS, and actually pulls the witch into the knight, which is really good. So that unconventional tornado worked out quite well for me. Now he's using Princess aggressively to try to mess up my cycle by putting it at the bridge there. And I just go ahead and use the bats to defend against it. Ice Spirit plus Knight honestly is gonna completely shut this down. Now that I have enough elixir to defend against this pesky battle ram, it's cake. I just didn't have the proper amount of elixir and the right cards in my hand before. Let's lightning the witch and both the towers. One, two, three. Oh, I missed the left tower. That was a mistake on my part. But let's see if I can still pull together for a win here. I got about 30 seconds left. My right tower is really low. That's what I'm really worried about. Um, I don't have any tanks, so I use the hog rider there desperately. And that was a mistake. Uh, probably not going to be so great for me in the long run. We're actually going to tornado everything here. And, oh, no, I lost this, guys. That was it. Uh, yep. Slipped up, slipped up, used the Hog Raider on defense there, and that was pretty much a game. Oh well, it's all good, you can't win them all, you know, we make mistakes, that's why we watch our replays. I'll give him a good game, I'll give him a well played, and I'll give him a thanks, because he gave me a good luck. You know, not everybody out there is always BMing, sometimes a good luck is honestly like, hey, well played, good luck on your next match. And I like to think of it that way, at least. You know, not everybody's a pesky little kid trying to get under your nerves and spam the crying and the laughing emotes, right? I mean, if it bothers you, honestly, all you gotta do is 
uh, what is it, mute the emotes, squelch them, whatever they call it in this game. Alright guys, that was the last match for tonight. If you made it this far, you were awesome. Thank you so much. Be sure to leave the video a thumbs up. It helps more than you know. Leave a comment in the comment section below if you guys have any questions or want to say hi. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I cover all kinds of different decks and balance changes and things like that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a good night.